Design? What do I need to know about design for the CCIE lab exam? I'll find out more on Ronnie's journey to CCIE. All right, if there's anything that has really been a little bit scary for most CCIE candidates, it's the idea when they first presented it on the new redesign that there would be a design module included in with, of course, with the idea of a practical lab exam. So what do we really need to know about design? So online, uh, I am actually getting a lot of different questions like, hey, can you do an episode about the design module? What is actually going to be that design? Do I need to earn a certification on design to actually understand what I'm going to be asked? Well, let's go through some of the actual different things that we want to make sure that you get before you start sitting for the exam as well and how you can begin preparing for it. So in terms of the design itself, there is going to be a design module. And in that, before we get started here, let's go ahead and talk about the difference between a regular design exam and a configuration exam. It's fairly simple. When we start going in for design exams, you're actually really trying to come up with what we call a viable solution. And the way that you do that, of course, is you're given different requirements, such as business, technical, financial, and other requirements that are there. And then you are trying to come up with a solution that then you can present, of course, to the customer, and that becomes a viable solution. Now, if that solution, of course, is accepted by the customer, that is where it comes into what we call the implementation of that solution. And that's now when a designer needs to go and find someone that will give them a functional solution. And what we mean by that is now that we have a solution in place or a proposed solution in place, we need somebody that's actually going to be able to help us out with the technical capabilities of a, uh, excuse me, with the technical capabilities of that uh, particular technology and what configurations may be needed and what is absolutely not needed as well. So when we start talking about that in terms of the idea of exams, right? A lot of times the configuration exams that you and I have gone through in our Cisco journey from CCNA uh, all the way to, of course, CCNP, and now towards the CCIE, most of it has been about configuration. We've taken a solution and we've implemented some type of functionality to it to make it work the way that we've done. If you've headed towards that design goal, then you know all about the different uh, requirements that are there, and then you're trying to present that overall viable solution as well. So when it comes down to the CCIE enterprise, the lab practical exam, well, what do we actually need to know about design? Well, when it comes down to it, the design module, which is abbreviated DES, D-E-S here, is about what we call low level design. And that is going to be more in our area of that configuration type that we're talking about. So the great thing is, it should not be where we feel like that we are a fish out of water. The focus of what our study should be as we're preparing for this design module and getting ready for the rest of the lab exam as well, is that we're looking, of course, at device functionality. What are the technical capabilities that actually can be implemented here and what can't be? We also want to focus in on brake fix. Here's a design that was actually given, but we realized something is not working. Is there a viable solution for us or even a functional solution that we can do? What if the actual process itself requires us to actually even mention that we need a redesign based on either the fact that it can't work anymore or the fact that there is a new fix in place that would actually help to improve what we're doing? All that's actually very possible as well. The, technolo the technology capabilities is also another aspect of this. Do we have the right device in place? Is this the right technology that's being implemented? And of course, when it comes down to design, one of the principles that we tend to also have to follow and realize is that, well, the service or solution, is it the best solution or the best one for that particular requirement that we have? We might find out that we might implement a solution, it might work, but it's not the best one that we need. And of course, we also want to focus in when we talk about this design module here on does the network as it's actually been implemented fit the solution that was proposed? All that is actually a very good focus of study to help you as you go through the design modules. Now, can the design course that you might take here at IT Pro TV, or as you actually learn more about design as you're continuing to study, can it actually help you out? Absolutely. 
But notice that this is not really about implementing a viable solution as much as it is about understanding technology, configurations, as well as what the technological capabilities are that we actually need to make sure that everything gets done here. So what are some of the basic exam details? Now, I'm not telling you anything that you can't readily find out on, of course, Cisco's website, but this is stuff that will really help us out too. When it comes down to any question that we'll face in the design module, any of the resources that we're given that will normally, of course, be all scenario based here, we'll get access to those resources progressively. So that means as we move throughout that particular module, any exam resource that we were given at the beginning will also, of course, continue to be there throughout all the other questions that we have. Now, here's where the key comes in. I'm not going through this in any particular order here. You do not have backward navigation. And that means once you get through with that question, you can't go back and actually find, you know, uh, to actually try and help you to re-answer another question later on. Okay. So that is another thing that you have. Now, the other thing, of course, is every question is going to be based on some type of progressive scenario. So that could be from the very beginning that you might get one scenario, which you're working through 30 to 35 questions on to help you out. And the reason why is that that progressive scenario is also going to be carried through in that lab practical exam on what they call the DO, D-O-O, the Deploy, Operate, and Optimize side of that five-hour configuration exam, whereas this one gives you three hours too, okay? So you do have to make sure that you understand that. Now, what about three hours? What if I'm actually really good and only take two and a half hours or I take one hour? Does that get added on to my five hour lab time? No, it doesn't. So even if you're able to finish the design portion, let's say in an hour, well, you can start the second portion of the exam as soon as you finish, but you'll only still get the five hours that you need. Now, this part is also crucial for you too, because it does actually require you to spend a lot more time in your study here. You will not have the access to any particular device. So you can't confirm things. You can't verify a particular technology. All this will be based on those scenarios that will continue to drive through. Now notice I even put here that no points are showing during this portion. The reason why is that they've actually decided for the exam itself that they're going to give you possibilities of multiple solutions and you're going to pick whatever solution you think is best that may not be the best so what you might find out is that their score is different based on the answers that you get or maybe even on partial answers as well so you won't get just questions that are actually either right or wrong but you actually be able to score points as you go through based on the solution that you're given that you are actually answering to, to make sure that you're actually getting through all that so it is crucial that we understand that all this is actually in place. All right, now that we understand that, right, and that you have hopefully a little bit more confidence now that this is really around the strong suit of you understanding the technology and doing some configuration and making sure everything's right, we also wanna talk about, well, what question types are there? There will, of course, be multiple choice and multiple answer questions, okay? Those will, of course, be strict in terms of the way that they actually give you. Now, the other thing is what they call hotspots. You actually have to be able to identify what or where that particular device should be implemented a lot of times too, okay? So you'll have the hotspots, things like that. You, of course, have the traditional drag and drops that you're used to seeing, as well as even drop-down answers that you'll be able to pick from. But the new one that's actually been implemented for this iteration of the exam is what they call the idea of the design matrix too. And this can be anything in terms of design here but they will not tell you how many you have to choose, such as select three. You'll actually be able to pick whatever combination that you want. You actually have to live with whatever your answers are there as well. So that will, of course, give you a certain number of points. If you actually get them all right, or if you don't get any of them right, that will give you the points that you actually end up getting. And then lastly, they've also introduced the idea of a combo question. And that could be any of the above question types that they choose to actually implement in two questions as one as well. So just realize that all that is actually very possible. So hopefully what this particular episode has actually helped you out on is to ensure that you understand what it is that you'll be facing. You don't have to go through and get your CCDE to get ready for your CCIE exam, but it will help you to at least understand some of the basic concepts here. And it also means that you need to focus your study so you can get through this portion of the exam as well 
because this is now what will turn into how you'll deal with the lab as it goes on. Well, that will do it for us uh, too. So make sure that you actually take a moment here and subscribe, of course, to our YouTube channel. If you want these as they actually post, make sure you also subscribe with the notification bell. And it means that in our very next episode, we'll be taking a look at, well, really starting the study here. I'll be showing you how I actually chose to do my very first apology that I'm going to be using to help me to begin studying for BGP. Well, thank you again for joining us, and we'll see you next time.